In this video tutorial, we'll be using LabVIEW 2010 to communicate with the Campbell Scientific CR1000 data logger. Before we proceed, it should be noted that the best tool for communicating with a Campbell Scientific data logger is Campbell Scientific software. We'll be communicating using Modbus over IP, and data will be IEEE or 4 byte IEEE floating point numbers. We'll start with a basic program uh, that measures panel temperature and battery voltage once a second. That data is being stored every 15 seconds um, where the battery voltage minimum over the 15 second interval is being stored and a sample of the panel temperature, the last known panel temperature. Now, CR basic um, variables default as float, so you don't have to explicitly declare them. I will just for demonstration purposes. We'll also create a counter. And we also need to create an array to act as our Modbus registers. And we'll declare it as float. Next, we'll configure the data logger as a Modbus slave. We'll set the data logger to listen on port 502 over IP. We'll select some baud rate. It doesn't matter. We are talking over IP here, not uh, direct serial. We'll also give it a valid Modbus address, map it to our uh, register array or holding register array there. And then I'm going to set this to zero because in this particular example I want to map the coils to control ports 1 through 8. And I'm going to select 32-bit float or long reversal of byte order. No reversal of byte order, sorry. Each one of the data points that I'll be serving up will take two Modbus registers. Let's uh, start by incrementing the counter once a second. Then we'll start populating our Modbus array. First with counter. The second one will be ptemp. And the third will be bat volt. Now though these variables are being put into consecutive positions in an array in CR basic, they in fact require querying um, two registers by the Modbus master. So we'll save and compile and send this to our data logger. Then we'll take a look at uh, our data logger using the connect screen just to check things out. Public variables, there we see panel temperature and battery voltage in our counter and our Modbus array being populated. We can even see that we're having some data saved to our test table. Well, let's move on to LabVIEW. After starting LabVIEW, we'll create an empty project. Then, we'll add an I.O. server. And that I.O. server will be of type Modbus. And we're going to communicate with the CR1000 using Modbus over IP or Modbus Ethernet. We enter in the IP address of the data logger. And since we're using 4 byte IEEE floating point numbers with no byte reversal, we're going to go into the advanced section here and select first word low in 32 bit data types. We'll select OK, OK. 
Then we'll bind some variables to our newly created I.O. library. We'll expand the tree, find our uh, different uh, register references here. And with LabVIEW, we need to use the registers with the F prefix for floating point. We'll add a range. And that range will be 4001 to, let's see, we had three variables. That would be to 4000 and, or we want six items. Each variable that we're reading takes up two registers. However, we do not need the even numbered registers. Select OK. They're of type single, which is 32 or a 32 bit floating point number. No changes needed there. Then we'll save all. And we'll save it as example two. Example two. And deploy all. Then we'll need to create a new VI. And proceeding is as simple as dragging and dropping our registers onto our front panel, saving our project, and then I like to deploy all just for good measure here. Now we'll run our project. Let the communications uh, take place, and there we go. We have our counter, we have our panel temperature, and we have our battery voltage in floating point format. We'll stop that. Now if you remember back in the code, we also mapped the coils to control ports 1 through 8. So let's go ahead and bind some more variables. Let's bind our eight coils. Select OK. We'll leave them as type boolean, on, off, yes, no. And then we'll add those to our front panel. Save all. We'll save all. And then deploy all. Now, what we're going to be doing is changing the status of our eight control ports. Currently, they're all off. We'll run our project. See that we're getting new data. There's our counter. Our ports and flags are still off. We'll try turning a few of them on. And we see the control port statuses have changed. Well, there you have it. You've now set up a CR1000 as a Modbus slave and configured LabVIEW 2010 as a Modbus master.